Hi, and welcome to the first part of the tutorials of Quantum Force, our new release for RealFlow. So we're gonna just get introduced and um, getting familiar with the plugin and going to learn how to set a simple scene up. Um, so let's start by creating a cube. Think of this as your force field space in which the field is active. Now we need some kind of particles or objects to affect the force field and drive it. So in this case we have a simple circle emitter with a noise field affecting it. So if we just want to look at that motion really quickly. Here we see it, what's happening. And um, now the question is how do we use that with quantum force to affect other particles. So let's use a fill object and fill the cube with particles and this is actually the best way to start seeing the effect of the force field if we uh, fill the whole cube with particles. Now let's turn off the dots, turn on the arrows and then we can just see the particles that are affected the most. So. Now all we have to do is add the quantum force daemon, choose your force field, and choose your field source. In this case the circle emitter is driving the force field. Let's change the resolution to 50, accelerate to 10, let's uh, have all the other modes at 0, and let's have range and fall off at 1. Alright, let's see how the circle emitter is being used to affect the force field and how quantum force uses that to affect the fill object emitter. And here we can play the simulation and we can see how the particles are being affected and um, continually accelerated even if the, they're not around the radius and that's because of the grid cell technology behind this plugin that allows to store the velocities and the force in the cells even after the particle has left the cell. And with the decay function, you can have control over how you want to uh, slowly reduce that effect. And um, and yeah, this is the first, this is the beginning of understanding quantum force and how you can become your own force field sculpting master. And here I've simulated uh, the same settings but with a decay of 100 and um, you can see that the simulation has changed quite a bit. You can see that the cells are not remembering what happened afterwards and the effect is killed off instantly so only around the circle particles are they being accelerated and not frames after so it's quite a different simulation that you get when you just turn the decay on and have the force decay very rapidly Now let's see what happens when we turn accelerate to zero and just use uh, push. Push affects the particles 
differently, it doesn't continually accelerate them. And uh, this can be good for a number of things. And here you can see what's happening. They're getting speed by the force field, but they're not being accelerated, so they don't. continually shoot in that direction and it's a more modest uh, way of affecting your fluids uh, it's not so drastic and um, can be quite interesting what you get with this effect here you can also use the decay as well so let's look at that simulation They're only, it's, you can really see it here in the simulation, they're only being affected around the particle and just pushed around. And then they have a slight speed which they retain. Now let's look at uh, pull. Pull and attract are similar but the track does not use the grid cells and pull can make use of them so let's see what happens here so you can see as soon as the radius around the particles are reached that the particles are trying to move towards the field source particle and um, again the decay is on zero so that means there is no decay and uh, you can really see the force field in action all these particles are continually trying to go in the direction of the first particle so let's look at that Let's turn the value up to 50. Let's make it a bit more visible. And now let's see. really see with the arrows here what's happening to the particles and here you can see that they're all trying to follow the source particles it's really like a rope that you're pulling on and it's continually attracting the particles and again this is only possible with the grid cells. In a minute we'll look at what happens when we turn the decay up. Here you can see the force field affecting the field object, the fill object, and how they're trying to follow the source particles. Now let's see what happens when we turn the decay up to 50 and uh, you can see that the effect of this these strings following the particle 
gets less because the cells are not continually making the fill objects follow the source particles. Alright, and now we're not going to cover heat in this tutorial. It's uh, coming up in another round. Uh, we can quickly take a look at the track as well. Now attract works without even having a field. Um, sorry, uh, without even having a force field space. So here you can see we did deselect the force field, but it still works. So there are no cells remembering anything. This also speeds things up, of course. And here you can see how attract is really even more than pull, like a magnet, uh, making the particles stick to the source particle. And we can attract, you can really crank the settings if you want. And, um, So here, let's turn the arrows off for a second. Let's make this color gray. The background. That way we can see what's happening. Here they're being attracted again to the source particle with the radius. And you can also play with the drag daemon. If you, if you want to crank up the attract setting but slow them down, it's no problem. And uh, as you can see, just with these uh, few modes, you have a lot of control over your particle simulation. So here I've gone ahead and uh, simulated <coughs> the same scene with accelerate 20 and pull 50 and then uh, zero decay. So let's take a look at this simulation. And here you can see they're being accelerated but attracted with the pull at the same time. Now let's take a quick look at the filter option and just to make it clear we're gonna turn down all the different modes and I'm gonna create a new container, put that in the exclusive place. And we'll add a gravity daemon just for the container. And uh, now what we want to do is we want to filter out particles in the radius of the field, so field source circle particles. So when you hit filter, you can select the container you want to filter to. And then we'll... Um, turn off the visibility for the fill object and now we'll just see the new filtered particles. And here you can start to see particles appearing with the gravity, so they're falling down. And these particles are being filtered from the fill object. And if you want to increase the particle count, make it even more visible. And this is really an effective way 
to create new particles. You can even use it as a particle emitter if you look at it that way. If you never look at the source particles and just the filtered container particles. So here they're being spawned as soon as they touch the radius. And of course, uh, higher the resolution and tighter the radius, the more precise um, simulation you will get. And here you just have really nice control of transferring particles from one container to the next. And you could even have these particles interact with the fill object particles if you wanted to. And then it also wouldn't appear as if they suddenly are being spawned, but um, they would just be gradually filtered to the container, and then with the new forces like gravity affecting the complete fill object. Here we can see what's happening, being filtered to a new event, and uh, create all kinds of things with this type of filtering. Of course, you can also use objects to filter particles to another container. Thanks for listening so far. I hope this was a good introduction for you to get started and watch out for upcoming tutorials uh, and more information on how you can make use of this new tool. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.